In this video, we'll cover 10 ways to use AI in Photoshop that actually looks good. And thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring it. With Photoshop now offering Generative Expand, it's now easier than ever to change the aspect ratio of a photo. Check out this photo with the classic 4x5 made for Instagram crop. I just realized it would make a great thumbnail, but I lost the original in the great hard drive crash of 2019. I'll select the crop tool, which immediately brings up Generative Expand in this new contextual taskbar. I'll select 16 by 9 and stretch it out, giving myself more headroom and footroom too. This is Photoshop's AI at its finest. Of course, it also gives you three variations to choose from, so have at it and see what kind of results you can get. Now, I think every portrait photographer has had to deal with cleaning up the background of studio shots. I like this angle of Matt, but I have a C-stand going right through his head and a red pipe as well. No bueno. I'll use Select Subject, invert the selection, and then only keep this part back here. Now for generative fill, I'll type in cloth backdrop. Again, three choices here. I think the first one worked best. I'll just remove this white thingy. Now here's another example from the same shoot where I used a few different instances of generative fill to get a more complete backdrop. There's always a bunch of different ways to get rid of unwanted bogies in the background, but the remove tool came out in September and it can be accessed in the submenu with the spot healing brush. You can now use the brush as a lasso to draw around something you want to remove. So here, let's get rid of these nerds in the background. I'll draw around this person and boom, they just got George Bailey'd. Bert, do you know me? Now let's do the rest. This is a really useful tool and has worked really nicely when I've tried it out. And just to note, you can do these removals on its own layer. Just check the box for sample all layers and start removing. All right, this next one has been out for a while, but in case you forgot about the neural filters with all the excitement surrounding generative AI, I found the most impressive filter here is colorizing. It's great for taking old black and white photos and bringing them to life with color. I usually find the default settings work really well, but of course you can adjust the saturation and make any color shifts you'd like. Now, before we close out of neural filters, let's look at photo restoration. The default settings will punch up the color and contrast, remove artifacts and sharpen faces. But since this photo is pretty scuffed up, I wanna remove scratches too. That did a really nice job, so I'll click OK. Then I can just use the Remove tool to do the final cleanup. A really common request of Photoshop Mavens these days is to turn a casual photo into a headshot for LinkedIn or whatever. And while this photo isn't a headshot, I could stand to ditch the t-shirt and look a little more suave. I'll select my torso, then use generative fill to say soup and tie. This isn't bad, but there are some funky areas. The third one is incredibly whack, but the second one, pretty darn good. I'm not a fan of wearing ties anyways. I find it so impressive how not only it matches my body's angle, but it also simulates the depth of field as well. Pretty freaking sweet. Do you ever go through all the trouble of planning a shoot and getting the wardrobe and paying for the studio space, but forget to bring a garment steamer? Me either, but Rachel definitely has. These wrinkles on our ghost always drove me nuts and it was a pain to try and smooth out in post. While using generative fill without typing in a prompt does a really nice job of removing these wrinkles. Then I can just come back through with the remove tool we talked about earlier and get the small areas taken care of. Do you ever glisten a little too much in photos? Even when you take down the highlights, face shine can be a bit tough to get rid of. Now there are a few ways you can go about fixing the issue, but my favorite is once again, the remove tool. Take a look. 
That was almost too easy. This is probably controversial and obviously you can decide whether or not you want to do this, but if you've got really dull skies and just want to add some drama, well, generative fill will give you some pretty good results. I'll start by going to select then sky and in the prompt, let's try cloudy skies. It's doing this weird thing where it's changing our subject's hair, which I'll deal with in a minute, but I'll just pick which sky I like the best. All right, now I'll hide the other layer and start erasing any part I don't need in my sky. So if we flip the original layer back on, we can see we now have some areas to fill in. So I'll use generative fill without a prompt and let it fill in these gaps. Now without a human subject to try and pull from. Now finally, back on my original layer, I'll duplicate the layer, select subject, and mask out the model. This will go on top of the sky we just generated. So here's the before and after. Finally, I think it's a lot of fun to just experiment with generative fill and see what you can create. We took this photo of Rachel's grandma on a phone, video coming soon, and put her in the salt flats. We're taking our dogs from the Golden Gate Bridge to the Rocky Mountains. We still get to take Carlton around, kind of. A lot of the painstaking tasks in Photoshop are now turning into just a few clicks, and AI is still in its infancy, so it'll be interesting to see what advancements will be made in just a few more years. Until then, we've got some bills to pay. We've been Squarespace customers since 2013, way before this YouTube channel started. We currently pay for four Squarespace websites, and striptriviapod.com is one of them. If you're not raking in money hand over fist with your podcast, you might want to check out Squarespace's new member areas, where you can sell access to gated content like video classes, digital downloads, or newsletters. You can also showcase your photography with Squarespace's professional portfolio designs. Customize the layout, the look, and the feel to make it your own. Also, you can schedule and book appointments straight from your website. You need to log in that client meeting? Well, they can easily see your availability and reschedule if needed, making your life a heck of a lot easier. Here's what our new podcast website looks like. And if you're in the market for a new website or domain, we'll save you 10% when you go to squarespace.com slash mango street, or just click the link down in the description or use the code mango street at checkout. The options are virtually endless. Sounds like there's just three options. Okay, there's three options. Oh, 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 oh,